The Lord be with you. Read it from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized. And how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I've come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and the son against his father. A mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother. A mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. The Mass can be compared to, in a certain sense, uh, like a Japanese buffet, because there's so many riches that we have in the Mass, in the opening prayer, the first reading, the psalm, the gospel. So I'd like to give a, you a tidbit of opening prayer, first reading, psalm, and gospel. Opening prayer. If you've ever read the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, which Father Larry had a course on this about two years ago, you probably remember that when Dante enters into hell, over the gate it's written, all those who enter here abandon all hope. Do any of you remember what is over the gateway of heaven? In God's will is our peace. In God's will is our peace. When I opened up the Mass with the opening prayer, maybe you weren't paying attention, but we're praying that we will conform our will to the will of God. Sounds nice, right? Easier said than done, huh? So if, if we want to be at peace, we have to strive to get to know what, what is God's will, what it is. Then, as Ignatius says, Beg for the grace. Beg for the grace. I would like to give you one way in which you can do it perfectly, or at least strive to do it perfectly. Consecration to Mary. Amen? Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Can you finish it? Be it done to me according to thy will. There you have it. Consecration to Mary. If you consecrate your mind, your heart, your intentions, your whole being to Mary, you'll be able to live that out. So take seriously your consecration to Mary. Amen? Okay, the gospel, first reading, rather. I find St. Paul is so rich that sometimes I don't know where to start in my preaching because it's so rich, this letter to the Ephesians. So let me take w one idea from it and develop a thought for you. He speaks about the word fatherhood. How many fathers are here today? Any? Okay. All right, you should be basing your fatherhood on the fatherhood of God. Tall order, isn't it? But you're called to do that. We say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So what are the salient characteristics of what it means to be a father? Because you're supposed to be transmitting, you fathers, you're supposed to be transmitting 
the fatherhood of God to your children. That's one of the biggest crises in the world is dropout dads, fathers that do not live according to their vocation. First is a father is called to give life, to generate life. What does God the Father do? He generates the Son, right? You know the doctrine of the Trinity, right? The Father generates the Son. The Son loves the Father. The mutual love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. Your father is also called to provide the two P's, provide and protect. That's a good father. He provides for his children in different realms. He provides economically, you have to earn the bread by the sweat of your brow that comes in the book of Genesis. You're so, so supposed to be providing emotionally. What does that mean? Showing love, firmness, strength to your children. You're, you're supposed to be providing morally by living a morally upright life and transmitting that. You're supposed to be providing spiritually. Spiritually, you fathers are the priests of your family. I'm a priest of the family of God. But fathers are called to be the spiritual priests of their family. How many fathers bless their children every night? You can do it. You've probably never done that in your life. Probably never occurred to you. Bless your children. Place holy water on them. Bless them. Send them to bed with your blessing. I give you a blessing, right? I'm a spiritual father. But also a father should nourish his children. Let me tell you the best fathers in the world. Fathers that can convince their children about what the Eucharist is. And convince those children, and there might even be adults, what the Eucharist is. And convince them that the Eucharist is the bread of life. Amen? And a father is willing to defend, protect, even willing to die for his children. I know what I'm saying is a very tall order, but my friends, let's aim high. Let's aim high. The Psalm. The earth is fullness, the, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. One idea in that. Read through Genesis chapter 1 and 2. What do we see in that? The two different accounts of creation. Everything in creation, all the beauty, the wonder, the majesty, the bounty, the abundance of creation, God created for us. How good God is. And how thankful we should be. What about the gospel? The gospel today, it's a tough gospel to understand. And there's two parts. Jesus said, I've come to cast fire on the earth. Those who have been formed in Ignatian spirituality, do you remember the last words of Saint Ignatius to Francis Xavier? Before he sent them off to India? There's actually a, a book written by Louis de Wool. He's written some really good novels on the saints. And he gives that as the title of the book. And it is, Go Set 
all on fire. Go set all on fire. You people are called to be missionaries. You're called to set all on fire. You're called to set all on fire. But first you have, as Fulton Sheen says, first come, then go. You have to fill yourself with the fire of God. Then you can give the fire of God's love to the world. Most of you are gonna receive communion today, right? You're you're gonna receive the fire of God. Don't keep it to yourself. Otherwise, it's, it's extinguished. It goes out. Don't keep it to yourself. What were the last words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28? Any Protestants here? Okay, well, then I'll say. Okay. You, you wouldn't know then. Okay, I'll tell you. He said, go, Jesus says, go out to all the world. Teach them all that I've taught you. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the world. A missionary mandate. Those were the last words of Jesus Christ. And by saying that, he was saying that all of you are called to be a missionary. Receive the fire of the love of God, then bring it to others. Now the second part of the gospel probably makes you feel uncomfortable. Jesus, there's a saying, I've come to Comfort the afflicted, but to afflict the comfortable. I like that one. I've come to comfort the afflicted, but to afflict the comfortable. Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace, but rather a division. Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against father, mother-in-law. Very interesting passage. Isn't isn't Jesus the Prince of Peace? And he says, I've come to cause division. Very interesting. And I'll give you an application. You people who have done the spiritual exercises with me, you've done the consecration to Mary, you're coming to daily mass, frequent confession, What's happened in your family? In many families, what has happened is, wow, mom is crazy. (laughs) Spanish chiflado, you're kind of crazy. My dad's going to mass every day. He's getting up at five o'clock in the morning to pray. Not only does he say rosary, he says three rosaries a day. He's going to those retreats. I think dad is crazy. That's what happens. When you decide to become a saint, you try to follow follow Christ 100%. You're living in a family of mediocre people. You're going to cause division. That's the interpretation of that passage, you understand? You cannot lower your standard. You have to raise it. And pray that one day, your family members will accept the challenge. That's a very challenging biblical passage. So Jesus said, I've come to cast fire on the earth. And he says, I'm in anguish until that fire being kindled. The Holy Spirit is fire. Let's beg today, through the intercession of Mary, that we would be set on fire with the love of God. 
and be able to set fire where so many hearts are cold. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Amen.